What's going on, everyone? It's your boy, Savvy. At it again, bring you guys another light novel read and reaction of chapter 46 of The Beginning After the End, which is the corresponding chapter of the latest chapter that dropped on the webcomic side of things, which is 88. So if you guys are excited to dive deep into this light novel reading with your boy, remember to smash that like button. Let's try to hit 100 likes for the heat meter. Like The heat meter is always going to be at least 100 likes for beginning after the end. No cap. That's the benchmark, but it ain't the limit. Let's go full throttle. Let's get that shit done, especially if you like my content. It'll mean the world because it takes less than a second, literally. It's free, and you're helping this channel grow and the series that I cover. So if you do enjoy my content, you do enjoy the series I do talk about, it'll be helping both parties. It'll be great, and it'll be much appreciated. And also, just want to let you guys know, I'm going to be pretty busy um, this time of the month because I have a lot of things I have to deal with. Plus, my birthday is in this month on the 19th, so I got a lot of other stuff to like, you know, handle with. But I'm going to be dishing out content, hopefully, about, you know, definitely for beginning after the end, and then I'll dive deep within um, Tales of Demons and Gods throughout the week. Everything's like pretty crazy this month. So I get a grasp on everything. Things will go back to a more consistent basis. So with that being said, I'm gonna combine my analysis videos with my light novel readings. So like you guys should already know, I read the webcomic and then after that, I'll read the light novel chapter corresponding to the whatever webcomic I just read. And usually I'll do a analysis video on Sunday. However, I don't have, I won't have the time, so I'll be combining it here. So when I read through this, I'll, I'll discuss um, some things that are different in the webcomic or some things that are different in the light novel. So I hope you guys are in, you know, I hope you guys are pleased about that. That will be dropping every Saturday. So stay tuned every Saturday to get the light novel reaction reading and analysis all in one video. So if you guys are excited about that too, please smash that like button, man. It means the world. It shows me that you guys actually enjoy this new change and you guys just still enjoy my content. It means a lot and it takes less than a second, honestly. It really does. So um, without all the way, let's get straight into this reading. Alrighty, chapter 46, not quite as planned. Ooh, okay, let's see. I'm assuming they're going to be talking about um, <laughs> their act, their first meeting, Art and Tessai's first meeting. So um, let's let's see. <laughs> the face of the dual wheeled boy visibly paled as he froze at the unmistak at the unmistakable voice. I turned to see the whole student council was walking towards us through a gap created by the students, taking calm, hurried strides. In front was Tess. Her doll-like face expressionless. Behind her, I spotted Lilia, who gave me a worried look. My attacker immediately recalled his two blades into his dimension ring and gave a respectful bow towards them, sweating beads down his forehead. <laughs> What's going on, Arthur? Gerard is the one that spoke up, making everyone in the crowd raise an eyebrow in surprise. Looks like the scholar mage knows someone from the student council. Okay, one. That that was not Gerard wasn't even in this mix in the in the webcomic. Just want to state that out already. And in the light novel, it's a, it's alluding to that Art and Gerard met prior before this interaction or before he went to Cyrus Academy. I know I I'm pretty sure I'm overlooking it right now. I'm sure you guys know the time that they actually met, but in the light novel, Gerard knows Art. In the webcomic, they don't know each other yet. To my conclusion. So it's kind of interesting. And even in the webcomic, he wasn't even in, in this an interaction. It was only Clive, Lilia, and Tess. Um, Gerard wasn't there. So this is kind of interesting, but we shall see. Looks like the scholar mage knows someone from the student council. No wonder he was acting so cocky just now. <laughs> Did you see him raise up his arm like he was going to stop the attack with his bare hands? Oh my god, he, he definitely cut off. <laughs> I couldn't help but roll my eyes at the whispers from the crowd. Even for preteen children, I had expected them to be taught manners to some degree since they were all from influential families. No, nothing much happened, although you should go take a look at the dwarf student lying over there, Bronson. I think that was his name. I pointed over to the tree where the dwarf was still groaning while clutching his stomach. Elijah walked towards me, hoping to distill the situation. Hi, Lilia. Sorry, we ended up getting caught up in this little scuffle after the duel between them ended. No harm done. He gave a slight wave at her as he started talking while directing his words at Tess. Her face still shrouded in a mask of apathy. Still, 
This student was about to attack you when the door wasn't even issued. This is a serious offense. Lilia stepped up, her gaze a bit sterner as she pulled out a small notebook and jotted some things down. Damn. Definitely didn't happen in the light not on the webcomic. <laughs> While Lilia, Gerard, and Elijah were talking about what exactly happened, Desai's piercing eyes drilled into me as if she was expecting me to do something. Honestly, even with extended life experience, I had no confidence in what I should do when it came to these situations. Hmm. Did she want me to treat her respectfully as a student council president? Did she want me to treat her as a childhood friend? Did she want me to keep our past relationship a secret as a whole? It's mama, Sylvie cooed on top of my head, and I had to firmly tell her to hold still and not to go to her. Meanwhile, oh, this is so different. Okay, let me talk about this. That didn't happen at all in the webcomic. Elijah was holding Sylvie down, and it's kind of cool that um, Art had to do in this case. And it's interesting that we get to see Art's perspective because we don't get that much dialogue about Art thinking about things before it actually happens. He is actually saying like, how should I like interact with Tess? Like he's going over like what's best for her and what she would want in the situation. Never explained in the webcomic, but I digress. Meanwhile, the crowd was getting more and more rowdy. The males doing their best they could to get a better look at Tess. <laughs> Hoping to ingrain her image into their memories to use in times of loneliness or long it. Whoa, yo, that was definitely not in the webcomic, bro. If you guys didn't understand that situation right there, he's basically saying they're trying to get a good image of Tess. So when they actually, you know, about to fall asleep, they want to relax a little bit. You know what I mean? That that memory, that image is going to be popping up, bruh. And this is hella funny. You, I believe I asked you a question. Do you dare? She took a step forward. Her eyes are boring down on the second year student. I was thinking that the student was technically a level higher than Tess, but when I took a look at the ribbon that was tied neatly underneath her collar, it had two stripes as well. N no, uh, of course, I would never dare break the rules like that. I simply wanted to scare the boy. I had planned to stop before my weapon would even hit him, but seeing that I was still acting rashly, I apologized. He said, shooting me a threatening glare as he bowed to Tess. Okay, leave. Her eyes continued to look down at him as he scuffled a good distance away before he turned around and ran out of sight. A few of the boys in the crowd followed after him, most likely the ones that fanned the flames in this whole scuffle. Wow. You! Why are you starting to fight with the senior the first day of school? You should know your place. Dang. Whoa, whoa. Is that Tess? Tess is saying that to Art? You should know your place? No way, that must be Clive. Hold up. No matter how rowdy he may have been, he is still your senior and he didn't break the rules when dealing with the other student. Furthermore, if he's a battle mage student while you're a scholar mage student, did you not pay attention to my speech about discrimination between the two sects of students here? That is Tess. Tess is talking to our mans like this. Know your place? Oh my god. This is even worse than in the webcomic. She handled it a lot better in the webcomic. Dang, okay. Yet, you still choose to interfere, making these types of problems apparent on the first day. She knitted her arms tightly as a stern glaze bored down on me. Her face flushed with either anger or embarrassment. Which of the two, I couldn't tell. Wow. Is, are you mad, Art? Let's see what? My gaze narrowed as I asked, unsure if I heard her correctly. That's, yo, I'll be, I'll be unsure too. Like, whoa, why are you attacking me right now? Shit. I took a step forward this time and I could see Elijah's eyes. I didn't horror as he realized I was going to go past the point of no return. <laughs> yo, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me like you're lecturing me based on a presumption you drew from the last five seconds of stumbling upon the situation. Are you really lecturing me right now? I took another step forward and I could see Tess once haunted face begin to crumble. He was about to seriously injure or even kill that dwarf lying over there. After the dual system broke, if I hadn't stopped the arrogant brat, you would have to deal with a murder case. Yeah, and that's the biggest difference too. Not an unregulated fight between two students. I continued, my voice coming out louder than I wanted to. Okay, this is this is good. This is good. Because in the light in the webcomic, um 
it doesn't really go to it, like the extent that art you know intervened was definitely shown a lot more in this because he was gonna the dwarf was gonna die the the dude with the two swords was gonna kill him not just break his arm so it holds more weight that art needed to step in and it makes more sense that art is getting this furious and pissed off because this dude was about to die if he didn't step in and you're lecturing me about an unsanctioned fight like so i'm glad that they did that that way so it made sense but the way that tess is handling it in this situation in the light novel is so different from the webcomic is literally almost laughable like she went full zero to 100 real quick N know your place she really said no your you don't know your pl whoa wow i can't believe that came out of her mouth that's crazy anyway um, I continued, my voice coming out a lot louder than I wanted to. I apologize for the trouble I have caused, student council president. I said, inkling, stunning everyone, including Tess. As soon as I turned around, a hard lump formed in my throat from the guilt. I just mocked the students for their immaturity, but here I was, acting the same way. I had forgotten that Tess was just a 13-year-old girl, yet I had expected her to act in a way that even I couldn't. Oh God. This is why I love the light novel. This is why I love the light novel so much. Certain things that like I, I, I dissect in, in the webcomic, they make it more apparent and more aware about like where art is thinking so I don't have to, you know, rack my head around things. So art, yes, even though art's an adult, he's owning up saying, I expect all this, I expect Tess to act in a certain way, way more, way more, way more mature but i came to act in that way and i'm a freaking adult in a kid's body but i expect tess to act that way it's kind of cool that he's you know reflected on that and he felt guilt you know lashing out on tests like that even though personally i feel it's understandable he is a kid in their height in their eyes he's a kid but at the same time he is still not really a kid he should have a better grasp on the situation and you know it's kind of i want to talk about it more after this chapter but um <clears throat> I really like how they did that there. All right. Elijah followed closely behind as I kept walking. My pride kept me from turning back around. What a lovely reunion. <laughs> oh my God. Hold it first here. Oh, Clive Graves ran towards me, grabbing me by the arm as he tried to spin me back around. Were you raised in a cave? Are these the manners your mother taught you grown up? Do you even know who she is? <laughs> I know better than you, bud. <laughs> yeah, I was art. Right. Holding firm. I stood and looked at him over my shoulder. I knew from the first glance that I would have never gotten along with him, but his words somehow had power to irk me more than most fools. Wow. Was I raised in a cave? Was he seriously degrading my mother? Let go. The malice dripped in my voice, startled even Elijah, as he instantly took a step back. Clive and Millie released my arm, jumping away as he guarded himself with mana. Yo. Oh my god, I wish we could have seen that in webcomic form. Yo, that interaction seems a lot more serious, bro. Oh my god. I took a quick glance at Tess and realized she'd fallen down. More from surprise than out of fear. There was a brief moment where I asked myself if I should help her back up. But as a crowd quickly formed around her to make sure she was okay, I simply let out a sigh and continued my way towards the dorm. Elijah trailed behind as gaps and startles murmured resounded behind us. President Tessiah, please get back up. Are you okay? Who the hell does he... Th Who the hell was that? I think Treasurer Gerard called him Arthur, right? Oh man, he is so screwed. He just told off the student council president of the academy. <laughs> they think so. Art's fine. <laughs> Elijah took a few hurried steps to catch up to me, eventually walking side by side. You know what you just did, right, man? You sure love attracting trouble, don't you? The first dungeon, and now this? <laughs> he shook his head, but continued to follow me as he reassured me non-verbally that he remained by my side. I almost chuckled at the fact that no one knew about my history with Tess until another wave of guilt twisted my insides. Aw. Maybe I was a bit too harsh on her. No, I was definitely too harsh on her. She was still just a little girl. I should have not lost my patience just because she acted her age. True. Um, as guilt consumed my thoughts, I slapped my cheeks and decided to let nature take its course because that was always the best course of action to take in a relationship. 
it's kind of cool that we're seeing like art is not so savvy and all the other things and stuff that he deals with with the relationships you know other people's feelings it's it shows that one art has no you know he's not versed in that kind of subject you know like in his past life when he was king gray he was an orphan and then his whole life he was trained to become a king so it's interesting to see this like it's still the same like he still has a lot of work to you know to complete about himself to actually make himself you know a solid human being that sylvia would want him to be if you guys know what i mean all right as the guilt consumed my thoughts i slapped my cheeks and decided to let nature take its course because that was always the best course of action to take in a relationship school should at least be this exciting right i comforted myself i wasn't really mad at her but for some reason my patience has grown thin at that moment i knew i should recoil with her before it came too awkward but i got the feeling that the timer was going to be an issue dang elijah and i had managed to make it to our dorm building without further trouble there were two male dorms two female dorms within the academy the two set of dorms were separated by unclassmen and upper underclassmen and upperclassmen underclassmen were students that were still taking their general education classes these students were then moved into upperclassmen dorms after they finished their general education courses and had formally decided on what type of student they were going to be. The upperclassmen dorms were simple, to say the least. It was clean and well kept, but lackluster in terms of furniture and decorations. It was a warm beige color interior, as stairs that went all the way up to the top floor, where each floor contained a narrow hallway lined with rooms. Room 394, we're here. Elijah unlocked the door by placing his palms on a round stone above the handle. It looks to be simple. <clears throat> it looked to be a simple artifact used to read basic monist signatures. As soon as he had opened the door, Sylvia bolted into the room, immediately making a nest out of one of the beds. The room wasn't nearly as fancy as the one in Helsey's manor, but had a very homey feel. Walking in, to our right were two closets, and to our left was a small bathroom cramped with two adjacent sinks and showers and toilet. Okay, interesting. In the webcomic, um, even Elijah was commenting saying, wow, Cyrus Academy is so big, and the dorms look pretty nice. But in the light novel, they're kind of saying it's not as fancy, you know, it's whatever. And talking about how there's a bathroom really crammed by like two sinks, like what the hell? Wow. A shower and a toilet also as well. Okay. The two beds were placed side by side, separated by a nightstand placed against the left side of the wall, while on the right side was a long drawer of folded clothes. The sleeping area of the studying room area were divided by a wall that came up to our waist. The three elevated steps lead into an arrangement of desks and couches. The two desks were placed against the wall opposite of each other, so we would be seated facing away while studying. <laughs> A long couch was positioned against the miniature wall, separating the desks from the beds. The far side of the wall was made almost entirely of glass, which instantly attracted me towards it. The view encompassed a big portion of the campus, which was currently a canvas of fall colors. Looking at it from here, I would have no idea that this place was an institution for mages without being held, without being told so. Oh, wow. Wow, this I'm just picturing that in my, in my head, and it's definitely not the picture that I got in the webcomic. This picture right now in my head is looking nice. Yo, I wish you could have seen that much detail in the room and the freaking portion that's all I all glass and looking at the view. Oh, I would love that. All right, I took it, <clears throat> I took a seat on the couch, somewhat excited about the days to come. Sylvie leaned against the window, looking at the view. Ah. We didn't even have dinner yet, but I'm already pooped. I wonder whose fault that is. <laughs> Elijah jumped on the far bed that was right behind the couch, the one that Sylvia had claimed for her. <laughs> I fell onto the couch, my body practically melting from fatigue. My eyes glazed over, staring off into the sky outside my window until I noticed the pile of luggage cases that were brought in by our driver beforehand. Letting out a sigh, I turned away and denied their existence 
dreading the hours of unpacking to come. Dang. All right. To Saya's point of view. Sweet. Ah, I screwed up. I screwed up. I screwed up. I totally screwed up. I buried my head into my pillow and screamed my lungs out in frustration. Mmm. Oh my God. We were supposed to have an emotional romantic reunion. Well, it was emotional, but in the complete opposite direction. Why did I even say all that stuff anyway? Why did I lash out on him? I know Art would never pick a fight without a reason, but I just went and told him off on something I didn't even see. Ah, I'm so stupid. Oh my God. I bet he hates me now. <laughs> Why did I say that? I even brought up my speech. Ah, I must have sounded like such a snob. You did. But still, we were in a crowd like that, and he still had some fault in the commotion. But I'm sure he hates me now. Oh my God. If Art just greeted me or even just talked to me normally, I wouldn't have said that. That's right. It's all Art's fault. He even ignored me when I came all the way there to help settle the mess he was in. He didn't even say hi. Oh my God. I wasn't expecting a full blown hug or even a kiss or something. Oh my God, a kiss, yo. Just a long time no see, Tess. That would have been fine. Who was that black haired guy that reminded me of a raven anyway? <laughs> Is he his friend? Best friend? It seems like the both of them knew Lilia and Gerard. Ah, this is so frustrating. Dang, Tessai is going over hella shit. It's funny that she's blaming Art on everything too. And in the webcomic, yo, Art did say hi in the webcomic, which is hella funny as well, because you know, that's exactly what she just wanted and she got in the webcomic, but she still didn't act that way. It's, you know, <laughs> it's hilarious. All right. I screamed into my pillow again in hopes of releasing some of my frustration. Mmm! I suddenly knocked on my door, jolting me upright. This is Clive. I'm here to check up on you. Are you feeling okay? I heard the muffled voice through the door. I quietly cleared my throat before I respond. I'm fine. Thank you. I used my public voice, as I called it, <laughs> which made me sound much colder. Who was that first year anyway? I can't believe he dared lecture you like that when you were just trying to give him some advice. Should I talk to the director about this? We could get him punished and it's fine, so leave. Don't go to the director either. And that's an order. Dang. I spoke harsher than I usually did to get the point across. How dare he badmouth Art? Only I can badmouth him. <laughs> oh my God. I fell back onto my pillow after I heard the faint sounds of his footsteps leaving. Dorms were separated by gender and class, while before it was separated by the types of students you were. For the student council though, we each had our own room in the building that was right next to the director's office. It was uncomfortable living with it was uncomfortable living with guys in the same house, but Lilia was here and the guys were generally okay. So I didn't mind too much. Wow, okay. It's uncomfortable living with guys in the same house. That's so interesting because she literally lived with art in like her kingdom. But I mean, that was from such a young childhood. So it's cool to hear that. And to see, like, yo, they're living in the same place. But this guy's still there, too. So it's not all just dudes and Lilia. Hmm. Stupid Arthur. Did you know how much I wanted to scream out your name and run to you when I saw you in the audience? Whoa, 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 what? Wow, so in the light novel, she did see art in the audience. In the webcomic, she didn't see art in the audience. Wow. Even if he was far away, how could I ever miss that bright auburn hair with a mono beast resting on top of his head? Well, so she did notice, Sylvie really looked different from when she first hatched, but that didn't surprise me. The fact that she was a dragon was something that should have shocked me, but with Art, nothing he ever did could surprise me. He was just like that. Ha <laughs> ha, I didn't even have the energy to scream in frustration anymore. I wanted to blame Art for all of this, but I knew it wasn't all his fault. He probably wanted to keep our relationship a secret from me since I was a public figure here. But still, why was Art only dumb when it comes to girls' hearts? Oh my god. Dummy! I hope he doesn't hate me. Oh my god. There were so many questions I wanted to ask him. What was he been what has he been doing? How was his time as a venturer? Did he get hurt anywhere? Did he miss me? Did he think of me at all these past four years? I wanted to brag to him about how much stronger I gotten too. After direct after directly training under the director, my skills as a conjurer improved by leaps and bounds. I would have trained under my grandpa, but it wasn't the best idea because he was an argumenter. Yeah, true. Which limited what he could teach me. He taught me the basics of mono manipulation, but as far as going down the route of a conjurer, the director knew a lot more. 
She was also familiar with the differences in elves and humans, which helped her train me specifically. Grandpa knew I had great potential because when I first awakened, I had created an implosion that blew up my entire room and part of the downstairs kitchen. That was back when Arthur used to live with us. That was when I had to wake him up every day too. I sniffled, aw. Oh no, I shouldn't start crying. Art would hate me for that, wouldn't he? I should just clear things up with him and apologize. He wouldn't ignore me, right? I cursed his ignorance and insensitivity towards a female heart. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, Arthur's point of view. I watched Idle as Sylve took a nap beside me on the couch. Her tiny body heaved up and down with each tiny breath. It's not like you to explode like that all of a sudden, though. Arthur. It would have made more sense. <clears throat> It would have made more sense for you to just ignore her and walk off, right? Elijah was still lying down in his bed. His hand propped his head. His hands propping his head up as he faced me. Well, I admit I shouldn't have exploded, but I couldn't help. Oh. We both turned our heads to the door when two brisk knocks interrupted our conversation. Dang, I wish we could have got more of that dialogue. Okay. That's strange. Who would want to see us on the first day? Maybe our neighbors are just saying hello? Elijah got up to answer the door. Who is... After a brief silence, I turned to Elijah, frozen still, getting up to see what was going on. I saw Director Gutsky standing nonchalantly at the door, smiling at, smiling at me. Good evening, Arthur. Elijah, may I come in? Yo, okay, and that's the end of the chapter. And this is perfect because that's where the last chapter ended off too. So I don't have to read too much or too little. This is great, this is great. This is really good because they're so, oh my God. I talked about a lot of the differences within this reading, but the big one is, um one, she noticed, you know, Art in the auditorium. And two, we got more dialogue about how Art feels about the situation before he went to his dorms and started overthinking it. He felt guilt instantly when he said that. In the webcomic, we didn't see him feel any kind of guilt whatsoever. And the one of the biggest differences is Gerard. This is like the biggest one throughout the whole light novel and the webcomic. Like Gerard's not even to be found in the webcomic chapter of this week. Like at all. He's not there in that whole interaction. But I guess Gerard was the first one to say something, to talk to Art. And that's why they were like saying, oh, I guess Art knows someone from the student council. Let the little did they, little did they know, little did they little did they know that he knows Tasaya and Lilia. So that is that is just crazy. Um, oh, uh, I I might need a refresher. Someone let me know in the comment section below too. What chapter was it when um Art actually met Gerard in the light novel? I might have to reread that because it's so different from the web comic. I don't know why they're doing it this way, but they should start incorporating Gerard. That'd be kind of cool, but they didn't do that at all in the web comic whatsoever. But it's such a big thing now. Hmm. But yeah, I, I like the inner dialogue both sides had. And I like the um, silly side of Tess. The mixer, we, could, we get to see like natural Tess. Like how Tess usually is back in the day before this, you know, school. Her looking all serious and stern. Like we got, we got to see her saying like, oh, why is art so stupid? Why can't he understand the girl's heart? Like, oh my God, I want to blame it all on art. Like I like seeing that. Even though it's not reasonable or logical, it's still cool because she's still a 13 year old girl. So, I mean, it's still nice to see. It's nice to see. And yeah, just reading it, I could like picture it so well. But um, yeah, that is the chapter. That is an analysis too. Um, This was really good. Um, this chapter, this light novel chapter really made me understand a lot more that happened in the webcomic. And I hope it made you understand certain things that happened in the webcomic alongside with, with the light novel. Because the light novel, like I always say in these um, chapter readings, mainly most of the time, the light novel has a lot more information than the webcomic. So it behooves you if you guys just want to know a little bit more of what actually transpired or what really, what message they were trying to get across. Tune into these videos or read the light novel yourself and you could just understand like what's going on and you could tune into these videos and like understand the breakdowns that I do within, you know, reading this and talking about the differences within the webcomic and the light novel. I definitely enjoyed this a lot very much and I hope you guys all enjoyed it as well too. If you guys did, please remember to smash that like button. Let's get 100 likes on this video. No cap. Let's get it done. Strongest family on YouTube. Let's, let's do it, man. Especially if you like my content, you guys enjoy this series. It takes less than a second. It'll be much appreciated. Please smash that like button. And also, if you're not already part of the family too, and you made it this far, 
quit playing with the kid, smash that sub button, join the family. And like what I always said, this is the best place to be, to get that dummy dose of heat. And obviously with certain things in this month, it's going to be a lot, you know, difficult for me to get things done. And I'm just going to be pretty busy. So tune in for the content, show the support. It'd be much appreciated. And it just keeps me, keeps me really motivated to make videos for you guys, seeing that you guys enjoy the content. So um, with that all out of the way, I hope you guys all have a phenomenal day. And remember, don't stop leveling up. Savvy Nut, signing out.